Hello everyone! Welcome back! In this video, I will be continuing to explain the Jewish High Holidays. After Rosh Hashanah, New Year's, and Yom Kippur, Atonement Day, comes Sukkot. So today, I'll be letting you in on the traditions and the meaning of this seven-day holiday. And as usual, I'll be including some Yiddish vocabulary you might need when talking about the holiday. So let's get started. Here we go. See Bowen. See Bowen. To build. Before the seven day holiday arrives, every family builds a sukkah or a hut outside their home. This needs to consist of at least three walls and is covered using schach, bamboo shoots. During the holiday, we eat all our meals in the sukkah. Men have an obligation to eat for seven days inside the sukkah. Women don't have to, but most often do eat inside the sukkah. Many men also sleep inside the sukkah. It's a common sight to see all guys above bar mitzvah age, 13, dragging their mattresses outside to their patios or backyards. See batsirun. See batsirun. To decorate. A great way of making the sukkah a cozy place to spend family time is by decorating it using no sukkah. Sukkah decorations. Many things are used. Kids drawings, art projects, streamers, string lights, fake and real fruit. Some people just hang up one or two art pieces and call it a day. Others go all out with sand art, mini fountains, chair covers, and much more. The most common no sukkah I've seen though is a stirun. A stirun. A star. Foil stars are definitely the most common decoration where I grew up. Every time I see one, nostalgia hits. And they're fun to make. It would be a shame if all those beautiful decorations got ruined. So to combat the rainy autumn weather, we use a schlack. A schlack, a tarp. In many regions, autumn can be a cold and rainy time, but we're still required to eat in the sukkah in most cases. So we use a tarp to cover the bamboo roof when the forecast calls for it and pray that the walls stay dry. It is after sukkah now and I'm editing this video and I noticed, just noticed I was talking about the schlack and how we keep the rain out and yeah, side note, this really didn't cut it this year. There were crazy, crazy winds and rain and um, that completely destroyed many sukkahs in many Orthodox communities all over New York. So yeah, it does the job sometimes, but in such kind of cases, a lot of people end up not having to eat in the sukkah and that's okay. Of course, we have a requirement in most cases, but in the case where there's intense flooding and heavy, heavy pouring rain, were excused. Just as long as everyone comes out, okay? See shaklen. See shaklen. To shake. Every day during this festival, we shake a lulav and esrog with our hands. A lulav is made out of palm frond for the center with myrtle branches, hadasim, and willow branches, aravot, on either side. An esrog is a fruit known as a citron in English. It's a citrus fruit, like lemon and lime, but it has a very distinctive smell, which can also be felt on the leaves and bark. We say a blessing and then shake them both up and down, forward and back, to the right and to the left. The lulav represents the spine, the esrog represents the heart, the hadasim represent the eyes, and the aravot represent the lips. Freilich. Freilich. Happy. This is a joyous holiday. We wish each other Chag Sameach, happy holidays, eat plenty of delicious food, and sing joyous songs in the sukkah. Schnitt. Schnitt. Harvest. 
the reason for this joyous occasion. This holiday originates from celebrating the autumnal harvest. We thank God for the crops and celebrate it. Uh, what's up with the hut? What does that have to do with the harvest? I'll explain that right now. See Bashitsen. See Bashitsen. To protect. After the Jews were released from Egypt, the Pharaoh changed his mind that he wanted us back as slaves. An army of Egyptians chased after us into the desert, shooting their arrows at us, but we were well protected. God brought clouds down all around us like fluffy shields. Nothing could get past them and the arrows got stuck before they could hit us. In order to commemorate the miracle, we built a little hut of protection. A gast. A gast. A guest. Every night, we get a different spiritual guest visiting us in the sukkah. They are called a spizen, which comes from the Aramaic word for guest. They are the ghosts or spirits of our forefathers and prophets. The first night is Abraham, the second is Isaac, the third Jacob, the fourth Joseph, then comes Moses, Aaron, and our king David. If someone shares a name with the spirit of that night, they are celebrated in a way that's a bit like a birthday. A special dessert is often made in their name. See Toshin. See Toshin. To change. Every day during our morning prayers, we say a standing prayer called Shmona Eschre. During this, we thank God for giving us the right weather conditions for our crops. During Shemini Atzeret, the seventh day of the holiday, we switch from saying Morit Hatol, he who brings down the dew, to Mashev Haruach, U Morit Hageshem, he who blows the wind and brings down the rain. This symbolizes the change in seasons and that we are now praying for a bountiful winter. That's it for today! I'm wishing you all a Chag Sameach. Is the harvest celebrated in your culture? If so, how? I'd love to hear from you in the comments. Tak for the dog, Litrao, Tschüss, and Avidazane!